I don't know if you've ever given up anything for anybody or for something. Uh, for instance, here's this guy who's a wrestler, but his forte is is toe wrestling. I don't know if you've ever heard of toe wrestling. I, re- I had to look this up. I'm like, how do you toe wrestle? Mm. And this guy is just like really good at it. And he and to have an edge to be the best in the world in the championship, he made sure he has no toenails. And so he had his toenails removed, which gives Harlan gag reflexes. It's so gross. <laughs> he had them removed, and that gave him the competitive edge. And so he's the world champ of the world. And I looked it up. I'm like, what in the world is toe wrestling? What do you do? Is that like thumb wrestling? And that would be impossible. It's, it's literally um, just like arm wrestling. And so you lock your toes with your opponent, and you have to go to the left or right. And so... It, you, just like arm wrestling, you pin the guy down and then you win. Mm-hmm. That's you, what you do with a toe wrestling. You have to lock toes with an opponent. Yes. Your feet have to touch yes. someone else's feet. They're clean. Are they? Oh, sure. They go through a whole thing they're, of cleaning. Their toenail is Makes me for think sure. about things that you give up for one reason or another. Like like Scott you had to give up. Wait to hear this. You want me to say it? Yeah. All right. I used to go to the tanning bed. And it was a thing. This is years and years and years ago. Uh-huh. I wouldn't go a whole lot like every other day, but I did go for a little bit just to get a little color, a little coat on my skin. But I started doing it before I met my wife. And then after we were dating and got married, I still kept going a little bit. But she was really worried about, you know, the dangers to the skin and whatnot. And I understood that. And it was uncomfortable to her. And she said, I really wish you'd stop going to that so i gave up the tanning bed gave up the tanning bed i don't know yeah. why i don't want to have the visual of scott laying in a tanning bed <laughs> with the little goggles over I his did, eyes yeah, I had the little goggles <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> coming out and then there's just you know white right around where the goggles are just a little bit yeah and then okay for heroin good visual image no it's not thank you <laughs> so and then heroin check this out oh. her husband gave this up, and this is huge this is a huge thing to literally give up Yeah, he had a bike when we got married, like a motorcycle. Yeah, a nice motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And the day that I got pregnant, I said, the motorcycle's gone. I can't, I can't be a widow mama. So the bike had to go. Mm -hmm. Sold it, I would imagine. Yes, he sold it. And I said, you, that's your money. Use that money however you want to. He bought some guitars and the pedals that go with the guitars and all yeah, the musical oh, the things. The guy's a great musician. Let but me tell you. The the bike is gone because I couldn't I couldn't mm-hmm. bear the thought of him riding it. And so Yeah, and look at the parallels here. Yeah. Scott gives up a tanning bed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, health and safety, right? 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 He gives up motorcycles. <laughs> I give up the tan, keeping us all together and healthy. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Talking about those things that you give up for others or for one reason or another. Luke is an intern, intern, intern here at his radio. Step up to the mic, Luke. So Luke gave up something. It was what? <laughs> so it's 2020. It's election season. And I'm a young 18-year-old stepping up to the world of politics for the first time. To vote. Do his voting right, right? Yeah. Yeah. My mom asked me, hey, we only have a couple of minutes. Do you want to go vote or do you want to go get something to eat? And I, being the responsible citizen that I was, chose to go to Bojangles. (laughs) So you gave up voting for Bojangles. Listen, don't do that again. (laughs) Go and vote. I do remember what I got. Uh, You do? It was a Cajun filet biscuit. And it was well, well worth it. It was such the thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm judging you right now a little bit, <laughs> but I know that you're older now, so you're going to make wiser decisions. Yes, yeah, next you year are. I'll go to McDonald's. Yeah, no, no, you will vote. You will vote. <laughs> you will vote. It's your right to vote. And then Ninja's supposed to give up something. What is that, Ninja? I'm supposed to give up dairy, but I like ice cream. So, so there's no giving it up. Nah. Not even, no. <laughs> I can't give up ice cream either, though. She doesn't. She doesn't give up that stuff. She even, what was it, a tanning bed for you two? Yeah. Because it was for Scott. Scott gave up a tanning bed for his wife. Yeah. Well? I, I, yes, I had to get rid of the tanning bed as well. 
Okay. My husband asked me nicely to please get rid of it when we got married so that I could live longer. Yeah, and she is. She's still alive. She's well. Tanning bed's been out of the picture for what, 14 years? Minus one or two stops. But, oh, you're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. It's all about perspective. Craig was diagnosed with a very rare cancer. I don't know if I can even pronounce it right, but it's neodrunkocrine. Okay. That works. It's the doctor word for cancer that's really, really bad. Mm-hmm. He had over 100 tumors in his body. That's and the horrible. doctor said, no more than five years, buddy. That's what you've got. So he started every treatment he could to have better life in the meantime, right? And he had to stop working. Because it was just too much on his body. But he changed his whole perspective. He said, my, pri- my priority in life isn't how far I can go anymore in my career. I have dis- different aspirations in life. Right now, it's all about my wife and my two kiddos. That's it. And I'm living my best life. So he is getting in there and he's doing all the things with his family that he can get in. And because of his attitude... The doctors are saying he's living so much longer. See, this diagnosis, 2013. That's a lot longer now. I mean, that's that's 10 years. 10 years. It's double his life expectancy with this rare cancer. And the doctors are saying it's because of his perspective and his attitude, even through the treatments, even through what he's going through. He's doing better because mentally... He's doing better. Living his best life. Mm-hmm. And I know God has a lot to do with that. Absolutely. To help him along this whole journey. Absolutely. But amazing. Craig, you are bossing it, man, and you are showing us how it's done. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. I don't know if you've ever saved for something, and you're going to get yourself your own birthday gift. Oh, you know I have. What was it? All the things. Okay, so she buys herself all the things. All the things on my birthday. For her own birthday. My wife does that, too. She says, I'm going to get this for my birthday. Thank you. I go, okay, that's great, because I'm horrible at picking out gifts. Mm, mm -hmm. So here's this one lady. She's always wanted a John Deere tractor. Well, yeah. A John Deere tractor. This is something that my wife's dad has. Okay, yeah. He's out in the yard. He's cutting this thing, the John Deere. (laughs) So she wanted one. And so she's like, by golly, I'm saving. She saved for a long time. She got it for her 97th birthday for herself. 97 years old. And grandma is on this John Deere every day, regardless if the lawn needs to be mowed. She's out there cutting the lawn on her John Deere because she's always wanted one. She's just riding around on it. She's not cutting anything. She is riding around having a good old time. The blade's down, so the grass is never long. And come rain or shine, she's out on that thing. Just having a good old time riding around. Because she wanted it. Yeah. Well, she doesn't have a license anymore, so this is how she gets around. In her yard. (laughs) You don't think she rides it to the store? No, listen. Maybe. I don't know. little Dollar General run. Honey, I'm just going to take out the tractor. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. So here's Deborah in her early 20s, and she's like vacationing in Vancouver, Canada. Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio, Harlan, in for Liz this week. So Deborah had this thought. I like these postcards, but I'm not going to pick one up and bring it home with me. I'm going to mail it to myself. So she did. She wrote something on it. She mailed it to herself, and she liked it so much that the next time she traveled, she did it again. Mm -hmm. 40 years later, still doing the same thing, right? And how she's feeling, what she's discovered, who who she is when she's there, what she ate that day. So now she has 40 years of memories looking back at all of the postcards saying, wow, remember that time I ate that croissant? And so instead of dumping the postcards and just going with the pictures on the phone, she does all these postcards. Years of them, and she and she travels a lot. I wouldn't say like you know a ton of times every year, but a couple of times a year. So wherever she goes, gets the postcard and mails it to herself. And now she has this entire collection of postcards that she is able to go back and 
just reminisce on. I love this idea. I might have my kids do it on a trip or two that we're taking right before school starts. That's not a bad idea. Just to have them write down their feelings, write down what the, what's going on, and then they get mail when they get home. Well, you're doing an Atlanta trip here yeah. real soon, right? Yeah. So you got Atlanta stuff coming your way now. Yeah. When you do that. That's that's not a bad idea. I, I know some people that collect things when they travel. I've never heard of the post. I've heard of postcards, but not mailing them to yourself. Right, like you just pick one up and you just you bring know, it hold home. on to it. Yeah, not. bring it home. Maybe use it later or something like that, but but not in this fashion. See what happens when I buy a postcard and then put it in my bag. It ends up at the bottom of my bag, all crumpled up, and I throw it out by the time I get home anyway. <laughs> so this is so much better. Yeah, because you'll put it in the backpack after you mail it. No, you put it in a scrapbook. Why don't you put the other one in a scrapbook? Because it has to make it home first. Okay. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. I think this is one of my new, most favoritest ideas. Good morning. It's Rob and Liz. I'm Harolyn filling in for Liz. She'll be back tomorrow. Sounds like a good idea. I mean, you travel to where you're going to, you pick up a postcard, and then you mail it to yourself. There's one lady who's been doing this for 40 years. Yeah, it's crazy. 40 years. And so, Harolyn's going to be doing some traveling. You're going to do this, is it this weekend? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, it's this Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so you're going to send back a postcard for where you're going to. Maybe I'll weekend. send it to Maybe I'll send it to the station. No, send it yourself. What do we need it for? You just have to mail it to you. The tradition is you you do this for your family. Oh, for your family. Well, I'm going to have my kids do You know do that. this. Well, yeah. Okay, so this is Noelle. Noelle, you've been doing this. We started mailing ourselves postcards when our kids were little when we would travel because you know kids love getting mail um and it was a great way just to remember the trip and now that our kids are grown and out of the house we still send ourselves postcards but the key is to remember to pack your stamps with you when you travel so many places sell postcards but don't have the stamps so if you already have them it's no excuse to go ahead and fill it out, put the stamp on, and mail it to yourself right away. Great idea. I love bringing the stamp with you. And the great part is, is the postcards generally take a little bit longer to get back. Um, so you have a little break and it's before you get your postcard, and it's just it's great, you know, a week or two later to get that postcard in the mail to remember the trip. I think this is the greatest idea I've ever heard of. It is the cheapest souvenir, and it comes home without needing any space in your luggage. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. Morning. His radio. Can I just make a disclaimer right off the bat? Yeah. Here's my disclaimer. I'm not into the show The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. I just won't watch it. Just okay. won't. I don't think dating's that way. It's not real life. But what has intrigued me is this new one they're talking about. W- what is that one? It's Golden Bachelor. I saw his picture. He's 71 years old. Ain't no way. How in the world do you look that great looking at 71 years old? Come on. He's got the tan. He's got the great hair. The guy is in shape. You want you it, want me to tell you how? Yeah, please enlighten a, me. A tanning bed. Okay. Botox. Oh. A little hair surgery. And um Are these all guesses? No. Look at You no. know this? The man is orange. The man is orange. <laughs> that could be Photoshop. I don't know. But a, kind of a sad story. His wife passed away. Um, not too long ago, like 2017, and so it's like I've got a second shot at. Well, I don't want to say it that way. That sounds that sounds bad. It's like, hey, I can I can have love again, and so I guess that's what this whole thing is all about. And he's looking for somebody who plays pickleball and golf. Pickleball has been a big thing. Yeah. I think those are some good qualities to look for, but I'm pretty sure you can find those same qualities at the county park. I don't know that you have to go on TV to find somebody who likes a little bit of golf. Like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Again, disclaimer, not a fan. I don't watch it. Right. But if you do watch it, this is coming up next. And we're going to see. I'm just nervous about the girls that the show is going to pick for him. Oh, yeah. Because history would show you that it'd be. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Are they going to be, you know, Mm -hmm. 71 and. Liking pickleball and golf, or are they going to be in their 30s? You mean acting 30? Yeah. Okay. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So I guess we'll see other things that are much better to watch on TV than that. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Shaden. 
11 years old, no friends, go into random people's houses in this neighborhood, just knocking on the door, asking for friends. Now, there's one door he came to, and he hit the doorbell. You know the cameras that are in them now, and you can respond, right? So the guy responds and starts to talk to him because this kid is just looking for someone close to his age to play with. Um, I just wanted to see if you if you knew any kids around like eleven or twelve, maybe, because I need I need I need some friends, like from really bad. Um, so the house to your right, there's two kids that live there. Okay, so the kid knows the kids that are next door to him. Mm-hmm. And it turns out they're not too nice. Here's how he goes on with the conversation. Well, um, they're not my friends anymore because um, they're bullies to me. Oh, I'm sorry about that, man. They're bullies. Mm-hmm. So they don't treat them too well. And he's still looking for friends. And so as he's going on with the conversation, he's like, the guy who owns the home says, uh, I do have a child, but he's like two years old, probably too young to play with. They're, they're just like the most cutest things I have ever known. So he's like, hey, I don't care if he's two. I'll play. I'll play. Just I need a friend really bad. And Shaden's going through a lot right now. So like a lot of kids, um, he has a little bit of autism. He's got a little bit of bipolar going on. There's also some other things mentally. And so the neighbor just wanted to help find some friends. And so he started a little GoFundMe help this kid out, get the things that he needed uh, to make some friends, maybe some new clothes, maybe some uh, gaming devices, things like that, so that so that Shaden could have uh, a way to help himself communicate with other kids his age, and they were able to uh, find him some friends. Get out. Yeah. I love this guy. Just went the extra mile for Shaden. He did, I think. You know, as his neighbor, he was like, oh, this kid really needs some help. I know my heart's breaking when I'm hearing him. So I just I just want some friends, please. Mm-hmm. He's just talking to the doorbell, Mom, you know? Yeah, Mama's so thankful because she's been trying to help him make friends. But there's only so much as a mama you can do to help your kids out, especially when they're going through things like this. It's... It's hard when your kid is being bullied and you just want to protect and love your kid. And all it took was one guy. Mm -hmm. One guy to reach out and help. And this kid's got a few extra friends now. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. School shopping. (laughs) It's so stressful. It sure is. And it's overwhelming. And if you have sensory issues already, it is over the top overwhelming to go back to school shopping with so many things going on in stores. And so Walmart is saying, "Mm, we're going to change that. We're going to make it okay for everyone. And so they've added some what they're calling sensory friendly hours Saturday morning. How in the world does that even work? So they're going to turn off the lights. They're going to dim them down. They are going to stop all the moving visual things around the stores, make them still images. Um, anything that's flashing, not going to be flashing anymore. No blue light specials. Remember those with the blue lights? Going yeah, that around? was at the Kmart that no yeah. longer exists. Okay, but no more. No more anything that could frighten someone. And they're asking people that shop during that time to be quiet. And so it's just going to be a more quiet, calm experience. I like that. So that... Everyone feels comfortable going shopping. Shopping carts where the wheels don't squeak or you've got that one buggy wheel that goes back and forth, that's all going to be fixed. Well, that is that is the hope, is that <laughs> that, that wheel one, is going to be fixed. That's what one would hope. They're going to do what they can. It's a good idea that they're doing something like this. Kind of a chilled, dimmed down, calm atmosphere, mm-hmm. which is good to the best of their ability. I'm sure there's going to be some things, but still. Well, and That's a good idea. There may be some people who are overstimulated still, and they might cry out or make a noise. So it might not be 100% quiet, but it is going to be uh, the more sensory-friendly time in which you can hope for a quieter atmosphere. And I can see other places starting to do something like this. So they're just kind of leading the charge. I hope so.